Hey, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachah Kodash, and double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, love, salutations, and blessings to the house of David, which is the elect. And uh, just excuse my voice, it's a little hoarse, so it may uh, go in and out, but Lord willing, this is um, an edifying um, lesson in the video. So uh, what I wanted to do was uh, touch on this term, um, which, you know, you know, for by now, everybody has, has heard it. Right. Um, but it was uh, just interesting when I was listening to this um, clip, which I'm going to play that you see right here and then go into the comment section of this um, of this clip. What uh, people were saying, mostly it, it um, appeared to be mostly uh, Israelite uh, men and men and women. Right. Jake, so-called blacks. Um, I didn't really see no, you know, Latinos, but mainly I seen a lot of so-called blacks commenting on the video and the term um, woke. And, um, you know, for a while, this has been out, you know, you could say maybe I don't know exactly when it started to be used um, the way it's being used now. But I can say that for my own remembrance, it's been like that for a good uh, four or five years Um but like I said, it could be it could have been out longer than that being used the way it's used now. But regardless, the uh, point the point of the matter is you, uh, you we're hearing this word or this term uh, woke a lot. And um, the way it's being used now is uh, uh, in a negative light. All right. And and that's mainly the you know, the, the thing, you know, that I want to touch on, because when you actually look at it, Esau took a word that especially uh, for Israelites that was used, you know, uh, um, positively, right? It was used as a, as a good thing. And when I say um, Israelites, I'm not speaking about people, Jake, that know they're Israelites. I'm speaking about just the nation of, of Israel in general, right? So-called blacks, Latinos, uh, Native Americans, and their descendants. Um, that's the term that we actually, you know, came, came up with. So um, I actually have it pulled up because I just I typed in um, chat uh, GPT and I just said, what does the, the term woke mean? And you hear Jake use it in um, songs, right? Or they'll say it, or, you know, stay woke, right? Or like they'll say, oh, he's woke. OK, and they're not you know speaking about them being awake from the actual physical sleep, but they're speaking in a sense of they are aware right their conscience of something and even in this truth when we come into this truth and we are enlightened we're illuminated what do we say right we say oh oh you know i woke up you know you know i woke up you know uh i woke into this truth you know 10 years ago five years ago etc cetera, etc cetera. okay so when you go over here it says the term woke originally emerged from african-american vernacular english right so this was something that so-called blacks, Americans, right? The tribe of Judah um, uh, created, all right? And it says, and referred to an heightened awareness of social injustices, particularly those related to racial issues. Now, when you speak about social injustices and you speak about it um, in relation to racial issues, what is that? Okay, that's basically the um curses and the fact that it's not really about a skin color thing right it's not a fact that we're uh, uh melanated people because everybody on the in the earth you know uh, um besides esau edom are melanated people right majority of the world is uh brown brown skinned right different color different hues of brown but it speaking uh specifically about the injustices and the treatment and the um, hatred, as it says in Ezekiel, the perpetual hatred that Esau has for a Jake, starting with uh, Judah, but all of the all of the tribes, right? And for a long time, our people were not, uh, you know, there's always been something that we've experienced. There's always been, you know, something that we as a people here in America, right, particularly know that is a part of the uh the plight right the, the the black american plight all right the the native american plight the 
uh, Hispanic American plight has always been injustice, right, and in, in, in inequality. And once again, that is because of the curses that the Heavenly Father put on us and using the sword, right, his sword as that whipping stick in Esau Edom. He set up his whole system. He set up his whole uh, uh, government and his whole uh, uh, nation and his kingdom really to uh, keep continuously oppress Israel. All right. And in doing so, he ends up oppressing everybody else as well. But the main thing was to keep Israel uh, sleep, right? It's to keep Israel down and to keep Israel unaware of, you know, uh, uh, how to come up out of this situation that we're in, right? So you have Jake that think they're awake, right? Because they're aware, it says the heightened awareness of social injustices, but the true, because you can be aware that there's a social injustice is obvious, right? But Jake thinks that the, the, the way for those injustices to be uh, rectified or for them to uh, be able to overcome those injustices is by uh, having Esau Edom, you know, uh, uh, pander more or having Esau Edom being more um, willing to meet them halfway, right? Or, or, or having, you know, um, the, the government and the institutions that were systematically designed to keep us oppressed and keep us down you know, uh, uh, bringing awareness to those institutions and, and those, um, you know, corporations and, and governments so that they could change their ways and how they deal with us. That's not going, that's not going to get it done. Okay. That's not going to actually stop and, and, and get us out of this circumstances that we're in. So the true awakening is repentance and calling and turning back to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, all right, and that's what this truth, you know, uh, uh, is all about. That's what the gospel, right, and what we preach is all about. But reading on, it says it was used to describe individuals who were aware of and attentively and attentive to systematic uh, discrimination, inequality, and other societal issues, especially those involving race, privilege. And oppression. Okay, so once again, this was uh, a term that originally emerged from African Americans, so called Africans. We're not Africans, but I'm going to say so called Black American uh, vernacular English. So this is a word that we use here in America, right? And it's, it's, it's used all across the world now, right? Um, we use as a as a term to be aware or to refer to the awareness of our of our um struggles here okay in babylon the great which once again is tied to being what uh systematically discriminated against all right and that's purposely done and it's uh, according to why our our inheritance who we are as a people and that was uh, being done by the ones who were oppressed i mean the ones that who were privileged which was who Esau Edom in his in his kingdom, and they used oppression to uh, further you know keep us down and to uh, 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 keep them at a, at you know above us, which goes back to the uh, prophecies. So now, as we read on, it says over time the meaning of woke has expanded. Right now, who did that? If it originally started, right, you know, uh, uh, directly talking about how we are being oppressed here. In Babylon the Great, in Esau's kingdom, but over time it expanded. Let's see what it's expanded to. It can now refer to more broadly to a. It can now refer more broadly to a general awareness of social injustices, including gender equality, uh, equality, um, the alphabet rights, environmental issues, and other forms of inequality. And you had a lot of. You know, our people that sold out, you know, the BLM, right? Uh, uh, a lot of Jake that basically, you know, uh, uh, wants to be down in, uh, uh, in, in America. They want to stay in this place, right? And you had, like I said, you had sellouts. You had people that uh, Esau set up, right? Jake that Esau set up to use this term woke, right? Which we just read what it originally means. And even in the scriptures, it has a meaning. Okay. But that term now is being used 
to uh, expand it to being aware of social injustices that really has nothing to do with us as a nation of people and us being delivered from this oppression. And really now you got Jake that is crying out and, and complaining about inequalities that are being done to individuals who live a sinful and wicked life, right? AKA the uh, alphabet people. All right. And they also using it for gender e uh, equality, right? Trying to make a man and a woman, you know, uh, uh, equal, which that also goes against the order of the dynamic that the heavenly father set up between men and women, which will bring what disorder. So, you have uh, uh, that terminology being used, right, by Jake and 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 they call them the, the liberals, right, the left the left liberals, and they want to be liberal, right? They or they want to have the liberty to do uh, wickedness, to do sin. But on the right, let's keep going. On the so-called right side, it says, however, in recent years, the term has also been co-opted and sometimes used. Per uh, per gen per per, per gem uh, see, you know what? I'm going to try it. I have it pu pulled up here. Let's hear it. Pejorative. Pejoratively, right? Pejoratively, which that term that that word means expressing contempt or disapproval, right? So the word pejorative means you know also derogatory, right? Def uh, def defamatory, slanderous, insulting, slighting. Okay, um, contemptuous, right? So it says sometimes used pejoratively, often to criticize people who are seen as excessive, excessively politically correct or overly focused on social issues. <laughs> and, and when you think about, uh, uh, you know, what we're doing as being out those men at hazard of our lives. The whole point of us repenting is so that we can live in a in a kingdom of peace and we won't have any social issues because the social issue that Jake has right now is that we have our enemies that are above us. We are being oppressed by the hands of them that hate us. That's a social issue. And it's not just a physical oppression. It's a mental oppression as well. OK, it's a. Uh, 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 a spiritual oppression. They, the enchantments, the witchcraft, right? The uh, way that they they uh, sneakily or, or cunningly destroy our family, our family structures, right? How they uh, forwarded forward the women over our men. That destroys. The scripture tells you that that my people who call uh, who lead you to err, right? Women of uh, women rule over you, you know, roughly paraphrasing Isaiah, the third chapter, that mindset and that type of dynamic in a, a, a way of being way of living was pushed out underneath Esau's uh, kingdom and it was mainly pushed out on our people. OK, this whole alphabet lifestyle, the sod, you know, the sodomish behavior, that was a thing that's been forward and pushed onto our people. You see it in commercials. Right. When whenever they have some commercial about some type of uh, um, uh, alphabet type of lifestyle, it's it's always uh, a Jake isn't always involved when they have a TV show, a movie. It's always the, the always the one Jake in there got to be feminine and talking about the man. Right. He got to be feminine or he got to be a sodomite. You see, so that's how they uh, um, systematically have been destroying us. And that's a social a social issue. Because us as a nation of people are being destroyed. Right. So it just keeps reading. It says some critics use woke as a way to mock or dismiss progressive progressive ideas, framing them as overly idealistic or disconnected from practical realities. So woke can carry different meanings depending on context, either as a positive term for social consciousness or a negative one when used to critique perceived overzealousness. Now, the thing is, the term or the word woke should never have a negative connotation to it. Right. When you actually think about and, and this is what Esau uh, does, as the scripture says, 
and we'll get it. And I'll play this. Um, I'll play this clip here in the book of Isaiah, chapter five, verse twenty. It says, "Woe unto them that call evil good, and that call good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter." And this is what Esau does. OK, he, he actually took a positive word, a positive uh, uh, meaning that the pos a word that was positive that had a, um, a positive meaning behind it. And he now has made it into something that is derogatory he, uh, or, or negative. Right. And also he mocks when you actually are in a awoken state. And I'm not talking about the new concept of woke, right? And I'm not talking about this social in, uh, justice for these other other inequalities or these other problems. I'm talking about the original, um, the original uh, term and, and use usage of the word. Esau mocks and dismisses that because for him it is not a good thing. It is not positive, right? For Jake, particularly, to be um, woke. All right. And this is why they ultimately hate this truth. And they're they're setting up, you know, things They set up people to come against us. Right. And then ultimately they're going to uh, actually have this truth not being able to be uh, spoken freely as it is right now, which is all, you know, uh, prophecy anyway. Right. Because they don't want you it's to right be down to it. it was... They don't want you to be awakened. They want you to stay asleep. They want you to stay un unaware. Right. Of the oppression, to stay unaware of the social injustice, to stay unaware of the inequalities, to stay unaware of Esau ruling over you. They and, and not have a not be and not look at that as problematic. See? So now let's listen to this. Salaki for the, you know, the ramp the 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 ramping, but let's go back. All right, it's not gonna do it. Uh, the, the interpretation of this, but I should have known it's Holly weird. I should have known they'd try to make it woke in the ways that they could think of. Um, let's just start oh. with the fact that they have Ariana Grande, who is obviously a Hispanic woman, playing the part of a ditzy, blonde, white, really villain when it comes right down to it and for this particular movie. Uh, the, the racism and the racial appropriation I, I just thought was uh, offensive, frankly. Uh, all white mm. people aren't dumb and evil, and I just get kind of sick of that storyline, and I feel like that's where it started, and it kind of lost me there. And the idea of seeing uh, the, the interpretation of this, but I should have known it's Holly weird. I should have known they'd try to make it woke in the ways that they could think of. Um, let's just start oh. with the fact that they have Ariana Grande, who is obviously a Hispanic woman, playing the part of a ditzy, blonde, white really villain when it comes right down to it and for this particular movie. Uh, the, the racism and the racial appropriation I, I just thought was uh, offensive, frankly. Uh, all white mm. people aren't dumb and evil. And I just get kind of sick of that storyline. And I feel like that's where it started and it kind of lost me there. And the idea of seeing uh, the, the interpretation of this. Okay, so now, like I said, this they're using this term woke, right, to be uh, mocking, right, and and... and to uh, use it as a, a negative thing, but and and I haven't seen this movie, so I don't know what this movie is about. But uh, it was interesting how the fact that she and this a lot of Edomites are doing this now. They're claiming that things that are happening within their own own country, right, their own kingdom is now is, is now being racist towards them. You have Edomites that are now speaking about. I believe there was in the Congress and, and the Jake woman was up there and uh, uh, some of the congressmen um, were basically saying that they feel oppressed, like a white man feels oppressed in, in America. <laughs> like this is this is the 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 uh, cunning deceit, the cunning, uh, the, the cunning tricks, right? The wiles of the devil that he does. He uses he tries to basically. Uh, use terms and, and and paint a picture to where he is the villain. I mean, not villain. He is the victim, right? That's why you have the whole anti uh, uh, SEM thing going on. Although they doing all of the wickedness, he he's trying to paint a picture a picture that oh no, he, he they're oppressed. They're being uh, systematically 
uh, uh, um, you know, uh, discriminated against. That being a, a so-called white man is now, you know, a villain, you know, is now something that is is uh, looked at as being bad. But you set up your whole country on your whole your law systems, your institutions are all set up against Jake. So how can you as a so-called uh, uh, as an Edomite in your kingdom, in your Edomite kingdom, talk about. The it's it, it's not the way that Edomites are not being are being treated is unfair, <laughs> but nonetheless that's just another um you know another ploy right another uh wow of the devil right because he's a subtle beast, but um, I looked at a couple of these um comments and I'm just gonna read a couple that stuck out to me. It says, I don't know if it's just me, but when people use the term woke. I automatically feel like there's a sprinkle of racism in there. And you have people comment says it's more it's more than just a a you know sprinkle but but you got some people that think like this because simply the term woke is just us blacks and minorities meaning the uh, you know mainly the, the southern the northern kingdom his, Hispanics being heard and, and included. And that's the thing Jake want to be heard and, and, and included in Esau's blessing. <laughs> he wants to be heard and, and included in Esau's kingdom. Just like how you had Jake during the time of Egypt, that they want to go back to Egypt. There's nothing new underneath the sun, right? Um, it says, just like blacks, Hispanics get tired of being depicted as gangsters and drug dealers or, uh, or ghetto. Welcome to the club. Okay, let's see. What else we got? Um... Just uh, looking through, they're talking about Ariana Grande not being uh, Hispanic. Yeah, see that racial appropriation. They want to be oppressed so bad. And that's what Esau is doing, right? He's trying to take this term, woke, and, <laughs> and using his term to cry that he's being oppressed. That a woke mentality is oppressing Esau. But in reality, in, in actual, the spiritual awakeness right is is going to lead to the oppression of esau edom and these other nations but first and foremost uh, esau edom because esau knows i'm speaking about the elites and hey maybe even these edomites in their spirit maybe they even know right i don't know what it feels like to be an edomite right now and seeing jake wake up <laughs> okay seeing israelites repent and turn back and call upon the name of yahweh bashim yahweh right but maybe in their spirit they're seeing the, this awakening, this great awakening, and they're in their fear for actually, it's not a maybe. Scripture, scripture says that, right? Let's pull it up. In the book of uh, Revelation, um, chapter 11. The book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 8, it says, um, and their dead bodies, the dead bodies is speaking about the two witnesses, which represent the, the, the two um, sticks, right? The northern and southern kingdom. It says, shall lie in that great city and lie in the city of that, uh, it lie in the street, Salaki, of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified, which speaking about here, Babylon the Great, uh, Yahweh Shai being X'd out, um, uh, mainly what happened here, Okay. Um, and what he represents and what what the truth about Yahweh Shai is that was crucified here. OK, that was crossed out here, it says, and they of the people and the kindreds and the tongues and the nations shall see their dead bodies three and a half days and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Right. Because it's not speaking about physical our physical dead bodies of uh, the, the nation of Israel, Judah and, and, and Ephraim is speaking about us spiritually being dead. Okay, in that time period of us spiritually being dead uh, here in America, roughly 350 years from 1620, right, when the first uh, ships, uh, you know, came from, or the first ships came from uh, uh, Portugal and Spain, 
But we know the transatlantic slave trade when the southern kingdom came over to the Americas and was oppressed together with the northern kingdom, right? So from 1620 all the way to around uh, 1970, you know, representing, um, which is like 350 years, that's what these three and a half days represent, we were in a dead state of mind. And what happened around 1970 is when this truth started to come, uh, started to be brought out, all right? That's when the name of the Lord was starting to be called upon as a prophecy uh, said that in the last in the, in the last day before Yahweh Shai come, he was going to send Elijah the prophet to turn the hearts of the children to the fathers and the heart of the fathers to the children. That was us being awakened. That's when the awakening awakening started. And it started with Elijah the prophet, who we believe through the spirit was uh, Elder Abba Bivens. Okay. And it says, uh, verse 10, and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send uh, gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. So they were happy that we were in this docile, this sleep, this slumber state, right? That we were unconscious of who we were. Verse 11 is the point. It says, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life, see that? Because when you are awake, when you're asleep, they say sleep is, is the cousin of death, right? When you're asleep, you're like you're in a, in a, you're in a, you're a breathing, you're alive, but you're not aware. Your, your mind is asleep, right? Your brain is asleep. I'm talking about the physical sleep, but here, this is the spiritual sleep. But after those three and a half days, the spirit of life from the most high entered into them and they stood upon their feet in great fear fell upon them, which saw them. Right. So to go back to what I said, yes, these Edomites, mainly Esau, Edom, they are fearful of the fact that Israel is waking up, that Israel is awoke are awakened and to them that is problematic and now they're trying to mock or make fun of or dismiss right the fact that we are woke and they're doing tactics on the left hand and on the right hand you got the right like her using this word right as another form of uh um you know uh, racism right here somebody says woke equals black is what they mean right because they don't want israel jake to be awakened. So now that they're seeing things, now that they're seeing things that are, are, which once again, a lot of the awake, a lot of the woke stuff that the left is doing is a lot of evil and wicked stuff, right? Having transformers, you know, uh, uh, more abundantly out there and putting your face, having sodomites, uh, uh, getting jobs, the whole DIE, a lot of those things are are really pushing a wicked agenda and they just riding the, the coattail of jake and having jake included into that but really what they're pushing into your face is more much more wickedness so you got to be aware of of that as well but the simple fact of this lesson is the actual term awoke or woke is a positive thing but here it is esau being the wicked he calls it something negative and that's why i read um isaiah 50 so like Isaiah uh, 5 verse 20, but I wanted to get this one here too. And then, you know, we'll close it out because didn't want to spend too much time on the, um, you know, on it. But what oh, is um, edifying Isaiah 52 verse 1, it says, awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion, put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Okay, now when you go into this word awake, it's I will lum or uh I Salakia. I war, if I'm not mistaken. I war. Um it says to rouse oneself up, to awaken, right? To arouse, be awakened. Um, the idea of opening the eyes, and that is what has been uh, um, our spiritual eyes has been opening, right? Your your so called third eye, okay? And it says what to go into the root word. It says to expose, to be exposed, be bare or laid bare. And when you are when you are laid bare, when you when you're exposing something, that's what this truth is about, right? 
then shall that wicked be revealed. We're now exposing because we have been awakened spiritually, right? The spirit of life has entered into us. And now we understand why we're in this condition, why we're oppressed, why we are, are discriminated against, right? Why we're at the bottom. And the true awakening, the spiritual awakening, awakened ones are not asking to be included, right? They're not asking to be heard by Esau. We're telling you, you got to be heard by us. We're telling you, uh, um, uh, so like it, I just, I said that, that back to but what I meant to say is that they're going to hear what we have to say in the sense of their judgment. We're not asking them to, to hear us in a sense of, you know, we just want y'all to, and, and, you know, take our opinions and, and consider be, you know, have consideration for what we're saying. No, it, it, that's not what the true awakening, you know, is about. The true awakening is about repentance, right? Calling upon and believing Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, and then also what? Shaking the hand, going to the gates of the nobles, telling them, oh, we are awake right now. We know what it is. We we know how to get out of the situation is by turning back to our power, okay, the one and only true living God. And he's going to send his son back at Howard Shai to deliver us out of, out of your hands. And once that happens, he's going to give us, uh, uh, us, you, to put in captivity. And that is a fearful thing, This is, which is why in Revelation, um, it says, all they that saw them, what, uh, was in fear. Okay. Verse 2, it says, shake thyself from the dust, arise, and sit down, O Jerusalem. Oh, Salaki, going back. To verse one, which says, put on thy beautiful garments. That's what? That's truth. That's what we have put on now. That's what, what uh, uh, we have clothed ourselves with. So it says, verse two, now shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. And where are we? And who has us in captivity? Who literally put... Yokes of iron on our neck, Esau, eat them. And how do we get loosened from that? It's not by assimilating. It's not by looking for Esau to, to give us a better life here in America. No, it's a by what? Repenting, turning back to the Lord. For thus saith the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. See? So it's not about a generational wealth. It's not about being able to uh, have DEIs, right? And, and, and forcing Esau to, you know, through, through marching and through, uh, changing their laws, right? Through their, through their, uh, um, pitying us, them allowing us to be in high positions in their, in their kingdom, right? Getting high position jobs. No, all you are is you're just us. You're still in Esau shit. The way you loosen the bands, is by having Yahweh Shai come and deliver us. And that's why it says you should be redeemed without money. So it's not about generational uh, wealth. It's about repenting and Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai delivering us so that we won't have to be oppressed anymore. That is the true awakened mind. Okay. Um, there was one more I wanted to get, but it just slipped my mind. Um. Let's see. Oh, this is what I wanted to do. Let's go to where's I think of some here. I want to go to this, to this word awakened or awake and look at the lexicon. Isaiah 52. When I mean, you go down right, to the uh, Hebrew lexicon, it says, to be hot, ardent, hence to be alert, alert, watchful, see that, to be alert, watchful, in opposition, uh, in uh, opposition both to sleep and idle, or idleness, there you go, the simple fact is that when you're awake, you are now alert, you see what's going on, you're conscious, as we just read, and you have a heightened conscience of what is happening and why it's happening. See, you have Jake that see the oppression, but they don't understand the why it's happening and they don't understand the how 
to be delivered from it. And that's what this truth gives us. All right. So uh, last scripture um, here in the book of Romans. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Romans chapter 13. And there's other scriptures that speaks about being awakened. Right. And, you know, you can put them down in, in the, in the uh, comment section as well. But Romans chapter um, 13, verse 11, it says, and and that knowing the time, see that? And that is being conscious, being aware, right, of what time we're in. And how do you do that is by measuring the time diligently through prophecy. And only ones who can do that, that are the ones that are illuminated, right? The ones that are awakened. And that is something that is, is given to you by the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, the true awakening. But Israel as a whole is being roused up. Because even when you go, um, what is that, Jeremiah 49, it speaks about Judah as a lion's whelp. He crouches down and stoops stoop low and crouches down. Who shall rouse him up? Who's going to awaken him? See, because when Jake, if Jake is a lion, and you're old, as the scripture says, an old lion, he's still a lion, right? He's still a lion. But he said he's a, a, you know what, let me get it real quick. And it's a lot here for jumping. But I just wanted to pull it up real quick. Genesis 49 verse um, is that 9. It says, Judah is a lion's whelp. So it says, Judah, my son, is a young lion. Right? It says, from the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stoopeth down and crotched. And, cr and he crotched as a lion, as an old lion. Who shall rouse him up? So Judah is a young lion, but like a old lion, he is, you know, crouching down, right? He he is he's in a, 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 a he's in a sunken place, okay. But who's going to awake him? Who's going to rouse him up? And ultimately, that has been uh, being done by the Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, but is being done through the Lord's operations on the earth and. Part of that is what? Having, putting us into captivity, having, putting us in oppression, right? Putting us low, having this devil have no mercy on us. That has aroused us to wanting to uh, a change, wanting, wanting you know, uh, uh, to, to be delivered out of this circumstance. But how are we going to be delivered out of it? This truth is, gives us that how, okay? And that's what, once again, turning back into Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. So going back here, it says, and not knowing the time, because Yahweh Shai is about to return to deliver the ones that are, are that are, are prey. Okay. It says that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Let's see what they got for the Greek. Um, To arouse, right? To arouse from the sleep. And that's why the scriptures always speaks about uh, we're children of the day. We're not of them that sleep. All right. It says of buildings. Yeah. To raise up, construct, erect. Well, the spiritual temple of the Lord is being built. Right. We are his spiritual house. So that is being erected right before Esau's uh, Edom's eyes. And that is putting them in great fear. Right. It says. It is high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. And because of that. The salvation is not only just us being delivered, but it's also Esau being punished as well. And them, and they and the the more we awake, the closer they're seeing that they're getting to their uh, punishment because we had to uh, drink the dregs, right? Going back to Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah's, um, Isaiah fifty two. I was just reading, but there's a cross reference. Yeah, Isaiah 51, verse um, 17. Let's go to it. It says, Awake, awake, and stand up, O Jerusalem, which has drunk out of the hand of the Lord, out of the hand of the Lord, the cup of his fury. See? And how did he lay that fury upon us? You read the curses. It said what? That we we're going to be carried away into captivity. Esau, Edom was the, the punishment that the Lord gave us because of his fury. He put the worst of the heathen over us. But the Lord has, telling, has told us to what? Awake. Esau now is seeing us being awake. 
are awoken or awakened. <laughs> and he's now trying to take that term and flip it and make it a bad thing. But it ain't. All right. Well, it's a bad thing for him. So maybe you can say that. But it ain't. It's, it's the best thing for us. Thou has drunken the dregs of the cup of trembling and wrung them out. All right. So we had to drink that cup. All right. But as it also says in Jeremiah, if we had to drink it, shall thou be utterly unpunished? Shall thou go unpunished? No. Right. If we had a drink of that cup of the Lord's wrath and we are the ones the Lord loves, what do you think you're going to have to do? Speaking about Esau, Edom, you're going to definitely have to drink. Where is that at? Uh, yep. Um, Jeremiah 49 verse 12 it says, For thus saith the Lord, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken. And art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? Thou shalt not go unpunished. But thou shalt surely drink of it. And this is a, 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 a decree that the Most High Yahweh made unto Esau Edom. All right. And he is now going to go have to drink of that cup. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. <laughs> okay. So, you know, I'm in it there, Lord willing. This was edifying unto the elect, giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Ba Shem Yahweh Shai. Ba Shem Shalom.